What's up, everybody? It's your boy, D. Rucker. want to do a, a video real quick. Maybe not real quick. That's just a word that I'll say. Uh, this video might be a little longer than most of my videos because today I'm going to be talking about depression. And depression is something that I know that a lot of people have struggled with. I know it's a lot of... I know it's something that people are struggling with right now, and uh, I want to hit on it. I want to talk about it, so we're going to talk about it today, um, and the reason why I'm going to talk about this because it's something that I dealt with. It's something that uh, I struggled with for many years. I had to take medicine at one point in time in my life, uh, and you know, after taking medicine for so many years, I decided to stop taking it, and I just wanted to... Uh, self-medicate you know with drugs and alcohol you know and today you know i'm not taking no medicine i'm not on drugs you know uh i'm not doing anything you know so god has uh he has freed me from that and uh you know when it comes to when it comes to stuff like that uh i realized the the most important thing to beat depression to overcome uh depression is to change the way that you think you know, uh, whatever we feed, it's going to grow and whatever we starve, it's going to die, you know, and how the enemy gets into a lot of people's lives is because he will get you to come in an agreement with a thought. And when you do that, it becomes real, you know, um, whatever you are meditating on and coming into an agreement with, uh, it manifests in your life. You know, if I get off this video and if I start thinking about everything bad that has ever happened to me, you know, uh, if I start thinking about negative things, depressing things, I'm going to be depressed. But see, it goes both ways, though, because if I start thinking about positive things, you know, I'm going to start feeling I'm going to start feeling good. You know, if I start feed, filling my mind with the word of God, I'm going to be at peace because the Bible says that whoever keeps their mind on him talking about Jesus will be at perfect peace. You know, there was a, a friend that I had a couple of years ago and they had a bad thought about me and uh, they came into an agreement with that thought and it became real for them. And, you know, they said something to me about it and it was kind of funny to me at the time. But, you know, I learned something, you know, about that, about that whole situation, because they had a thought that came into their mind, you know, about me that was negative and they agreed with it so it became real to them and they asked me about it and we ended up you know squashing it and um and you know we we cool now you know i love them they love me but god was showing me with that situation on how the enemy works you know how we can make things just you know just become real and over time you know the next thing you know you'll you'll be depressed and you know we're we're having a lot of people you know commit suicide in this world you know they were talking about on the news how doctors and 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 cops are killing themselves more than anybody you know we got pastors that are dealing with depression you know more men struggle with um depression than women just because you know men we don't really uh, we're not really big talkers when it comes to our emotions. You know, we don't like to just really just get deep. And uh, that just comes because, you know, the way that we was brought up and stuff. And, you know, that that's not really a good thing. I mean, it's good for a man to be strong. But, you know, when you're dealing with some stuff and you got a lot of stuff going on in you and you're holding it in, you know, that can be a, a bad thing over time. So, you know, if you're dealing with depression, you want to have somebody in your life that you can talk to, somebody that will uh, truly pray for you, you know, and that's what I love about the friends that I got in my life now. You know, I, I've had friends, uh, you know, in the past and they would be there for me when I need a ride or they'll be there for me when it's time to fight or they'll be there for me when it's time to drink. But, you know. And in this world, I need somebody that can go in the spirit, you know, somebody that can pull down some strongholds, somebody that can have my back in prayer, somebody that I can talk to. So that's important. You know, have somebody in your life that you can uh, that you can talk to, have somebody in your life that will pray for you, because there's nothing wrong with asking people for prayer. A lot of times we don't want people to know what's going on in our life and you can't let everybody know, but have somebody, at least one person that will pray for you. Um you know, one of the most important things to do, too, is is to be in praise and worship. You know, the Bible talks about in Isaiah 61 and 3, 
you know, to put on the garment of praise to overcome the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness is depression. And when you are dealing with a with a generational spirit, like if, if you see that uh, depression runs in your family, if you notice that your mom was depressed or your dad or your uncle or your grandma, you know, those are uh, that's what you would call a, a familiar spirit, a spirit that is familiar with the bloodline. And, and they don't just leave just like that. I mean, God can do anything and he can, you know, bring you deliverance in any way that he wants to. But those are you know, stubborn spirits and they feel like that they have been in your bloodline for a while. So they have a right to you. But when you get in the, you know, presence of God, nothing uh, of this world can stay in that long. You know what I mean? Nothing uh, can stay on you uh, when you are in the presence of God, whether it be anger, whether it be depression, you know what I mean? All that stuff has to come off of you. Uh, so if it's one of those things, like I said, that you notice that, you know, it's a uh, you know, it's strong and, and it's and it's heavy and you just feel like that you can't help it. And it's not even coming by the way that you think, but you just feel it because there are people that, you know, that they just, you know, can wake up depressed or just for no reason. Depression can come up on you when stuff like that is going on. Get in the presence of God. Play worship music. You know, um, I tell you one thing that helps me out a lot, too, is is the ministry that I got, you know, uh, going to the hospital, you know, uh, and praying for people, you know, going to the homeless shelters, because when you are doing good, it makes you feel good, you know, and, um, you know, we all got different gifts. I love to pray. I love to, uh, you know, I, I like to preach and I like to do all that stuff, but your gift may be different. You may have a gift of cooking. You know, you may like to make dresses, you know, you may like to just sit down and talk to people, but whatever it is, operate in that. Because when you do, it will not only bless, be a blessing for that person, but all of a sudden you'll start feeling good. And I think that's why like older people get dogs and stuff like that, because they, it'll give them a, a sense of purpose. You know, for one thing, you know, they're, they're taking care of something that, that is dependent on them. And uh, that's how I feel like about my ministry. I don't feel like I'm taking care of people that are dependent on me, but it gives me a sense of purpose, you know. And what happens is, you know, a lot of times people will come up with ideas and they won't never do them because the devil is really going to fight you on that. You know, you may think, OK, well, I'm going to start doing this, but you won't never go through with it. But press into that no matter what, because when you make it up in your mind to do stuff like you'll start getting distracted, people will start calling you, you know, you'll change your mind. You'll be like, no, nah, I was going to go, but I'm not going to go. But like, you know, fight that, because when you start doing that, it will change your life. I, uh, I was reading an Ecclesiastic uh, chapter seven, verse 13. You know, it said, uh, consider the way that God does things, you know, who can make straight uh, what he has uh, made crooked. And I think I'm saying that right. I might not be getting right word for word, but basically what it's saying is just accept, you know, the way God things, the way that God does things in your life, because the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28 that all things work for our good. Everything in your life is working for your good. So we have to trust what God allows. You know, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, we all have been dealt different hands in life, you know, and all we can do is make the best of it. You know, there's things that has happened in my life and, and I, you know, I wish I didn't have to go through it, you know, but, you know, I don't focus on that. I thank God for the good things that has happened because you know, regardless of what you're going through in your life, there's somebody who always got it, you know, worse than you. And uh, every time I leave the hospital, every time I leave the homeless shelter, I thank God because I'm like, God, that could have been me, you know, and I have talked to so many people, you know, over the past couple of years and, and they're in, in, in messed up situations, you know, but we want to complain about small things like we get mad because people don't talk to us or we get upset because our car's not working because we lost lost a job. And there's people out there that are in the hospital right now suffering and they have nobody. They have no family. You know, they just lost everything. There's people overseas right now going through things that we couldn't imagine. There's people who don't have running water. You know, those pe there's people who haven't ate in days. You know, and, and sometimes we just forget on how blessed we truly are because we focus on everything that is wrong. And we also care, you know, too much about what other people think. There's things that we want in our life, but the only reason why we got them because we think it makes us more valuable. It makes us more important. You know, it, we want what other people got. You know, I, so I was just thinking the other day, like, I wonder how many people would actually be in the gym right now if everybody in the world was out of shape. You know, would you still really want a nice body if everybody else didn't have a nice body? Would you still want, you know, something that 
you really don't want, but you just want to get it just so you can show it to other people. You know, I think there's even people that want to get married just so other people can see them with a wife or with a husband. You know, there's people that want a job just so they can go around and, and uh, show it off to people or, or tell it or post it on Facebook, whatever the situation may be. Sometimes people get this depressed because, you know, they see other people getting things that they think that they want, you know. But at the end of the day, you can live in this world, get everything that you want. You can get all the women that you want. You can get all the drugs. You can get all the alcohol. You can get all the cars, all the houses. But if you die and go to hell, it ain't even going to matter, you know. Um and I think about stuff like that because like a lot of times people are so depressed because they think that this is it, that they have to get all this stuff in the world. There's people who, you know, when you really think about how long the world has been here, there's people that was here a hundred years ago and we don't even know it. It's almost like that they wasn't here. You know, it, it really don't matter how they live because wherever they at right now, I mean, that's the only thing that matters, whether they're in hell or if they're in heaven, you know, because when you get to heaven, you're not going to be thinking about, you know, how you didn't have a car that was nice or how you didn't have, you know, uh, the best job or how, you know, you may not have had the best looks. You're going to be thinking about you're going to be rewarded for all the good things that you that you have done on the earth. That's the only thing that's going to matter, you know. And when you leave this world, like what will people have to say? You know, will will people even uh I'm not going to say, well, people notice that you're gone because there's people that love you regardless of who you are. Just know that you are loved. But, you know, what I'm saying is, is that we're going to be remembered for the good, you know, or we're going to be remembered for the bad. And at the end of the day, that's that's all that matters, because, like I said, you can get everything in this world. And then when if you die and go to hell, it's not going to matter, you know, but you can have a bad life at the same time. But when you get to heaven, none of that stuff is going to matter, because in 100 years from now, if you're in heaven, you won't be thinking about how bad your life was on the uh, on the earth. You know, and I'm not just saying that you got to be happy. You, you don't have to, like, live a life to to feel like, well, you know, I'm not going to be happy until uh, I get to heaven. You can be happy now with just the small things that you got. But just be thankful for it. Be grateful for it. You know, and trust whatever God allows to happen in your life. That's really important because if God is allowing certain things to happen in your life, it's for a reason. And he'll definitely get you through it. You know, so I hope this uh, I hope this video bless somebody, you know, and uh, just know, like I said, if you're dealing with depression, no matter if it's like a chemical thing, you know what I mean? Uh, I believe that, you know, it's a spiritual thing, but it may not be like that in every case. You know, uh, some people, you know, may need to take medicine. Some people may need to see a doctor. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I do believe is that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer and he can free you from anything because I had to take medicine at one point in time, you know, but he has freed me. So I know he can do the same uh, for you because like I always say, who the son has set free will be free indeed. Uh, so I love y'all. God bless y'all. I pray this blesses somebody. Uh, be on the lookout. I, last Sunday, I uh, inter interviewed one of the uh, one of my good friends, uh, he was talking about something that God has delivered him from, how, uh, you know, God has freed him from, you know, insecurities, because I know that's something a lot of men deal with. We don't talk about that. So uh, I had a good time, you know, doing that uh, interview and there's going to be more interviews to come. There's going to be more videos to come. So uh, y'all pray for me. I pray for y'all and I'm out. God bless y'all.